All right, now we're going to get started with scenario two, which is beat mapping or tempo mapping. And scenario two really sets the stage for scenario three, because once you've done the work of mapping your tempo map to your live recording, then you're free to take re uh, pre-recorded loops, drums, keyboards, etc., and drop them in, and you're ready to go. Uh, the benefits are really enormous in terms of what you get out of actual tempo mapping. Now, I'm going to be honest with you up front. You know, you see marketing videos where people say, well, our, our tools can do this automatically. All you have to do is hit this button, and boom, and it figures out the whole tempo map. But my experience is they really only know how to find the common tempo. They really can't detect changes in tempo or changes in time signature or sometimes even the start of the song. But I hear that Presonus has something up their sleeves in the future. So, use a song that would normally be impossible for those things to use. And this, we're going to show you how easy it is to do it in Studio One. This one here is a song by Wings, Paul McCartney, uh, called Band on the Run. And the little challenge is it has a uh, pickup measure. So we have to figure, and we'll use that to determine where beat one of the song is. Next little thing I wanted to show you is, you know, they're going along with a pretty steady rhythm here of that. And then they go into, uh, go from a 4-4 four, four time signature to a 5-4 time signature. And then they have a uh, measure of 1-2 or a half measure. Then they go back to a 4-4 four, four time signature at a much higher tempo. So we're going to work through all those different challenges here, and I'll show you how to do this. Also, some setup here. Make sure that your mapping two has the tempo set to don't follow. Um, so you want this thing to remain static, and then you want everything else to move to it. I'm going to turn my snap off to allow me to freeform uh, align those things to what's visually happening here on, on the track. Cursor follows edit position is on so that when you insert a a time change and you go to drag it um, the cursor will allow you to move with you and will allow you to line up with that you know whatever you're trying to visually line up to okay so the first thing is to do is to line up the tempo map B1 with beat one of the song okay so there's the first beat of the song so we'll kind of click somewhere close to that and we'll insert a, I'm going to do it manually here, insert a tempo change, select the left hand side, always work from the left hand side to the right as you're moving through the song. I'm going to hold down the control key, you notice the cursor changes to a thing that allows me to drag the tempo, drag it right up to the beginning of beat there and that way we've got a good start. <laughs> You know, I'm use, using my uh, metronome on. Now that will work. I'm going to show you in a second how to do that even better. Next thing I'm going to do is bring up the browser. And uh, this is a 4-4 song right now. And it's, you know, in the roughly in the 80 range, 87. I'm just going to grab a rock beat that's in 4-4, no swing. It's a straightforward beat. And drag it over here onto the page. Turn snap on just for a second to snap that guy right into where beat 1 is. So we now have that guy. Uh, tracking with this, and we'll be able to hear the kick drum. I'll get the browser out of the way here. And I'll dupe, dupe out that uh, quite a few times here, just to really use it, and jump back to the beginning. And now, where we're really using this is kind of our, our yardstick. So we're going to make up this beat one, line up with that beat one. So here's what, how we do that. We click on the end of the loop, or beat one, and go ahead and insert a time change there. And then I'm going to grab the control or control key and slide it over to beat one. And boom, there's your beat one lined up. So as you hear, you're actually hearing that bass and snare keep in sync with the tempo. Next one is beat one is right here. 
right there. So we're going to go ahead and line this one up, grab a insert a change there, grab the left hand side, control, drag over to that spot, and there we go. I'm going to just do a couple more here to show you how easy this is to do. Okay, so there's beat number one, there's beat number one there. We need to line up, so we'll insert a T. Uh, we'll grab the left hand side, control drag over to beat number one, and they're lined up. Let's go in a little more detail about the finessing of this here. The timing of the control and the dragging is, is kind of critical. So let's listen to downbeat. Okay, this one's out of sync, so we're going to drag that click right there. So I pull up control. When I press this down, it grabs two adjacent segments. See, it grabs that segment and that segment. It allows me to time stretch it to the spot. If I hold a control down, it grabs two, control down, then press left mouse key to drag it. Selects two adjacent ones each time. So click, then left mouse key key and drag and the other thing is uh, always listen to your reference track because uh, it's real easy to if you just try to do it visually it's real easy to lose track and you, you've done 10 measures to uh, the wrong one beat All I need is a today, if I ever... there's a downbeat there I'm hearing it click grab both things drag it over drag it over to it uh, another thing I wanted to mention was your drum reference track should be set to time stretch. Okay, so now we're up to where the song changes time signatures. Here it goes from a 4-4 four, four to a 5-4. Four. Four. Okay, so what I've done here is uh, you right mouse click to insert a, a time signature change. Here I've inserted a 5-4 and our um, metronome changes. Inserted a uh, one over two over here, it's really like a half measure. And back to the four four time again. And that's what it takes, you just... Um... Here's how to really help find that downbeat. Sometimes it's really hard to hear. Uh, select the listen tool and just go... You can find that downbeat right about, take the snap off. Right in that area right there. So that's where we want to bring our timing over to, our timing change. So I'll go ahead and select it. Okay, there you go. Three different time changes and about five measures and also some changes in tempo. The good news is uh, this is fairly simple to do and it's fairly accurate to do it this way. I mean, it is the ultimate accuracy to do it this way. The bad news is, yes, you have to go through every measure of the song and, and map this. So if you're talking about a, you know, 60, 80 measure song, it's probably going to take you you know, 10 minutes to map a song. So, uh, but it's it's well worth it. As I have said, that it's um, the benefits means that you can then use quantize to the grid. You can use bring in, uh, you know, external loops, drop them in, and they'll instantly sync up with the song. Uh, and remember, this is just an example that I'm using here that has a, lots of different various tempos in it. This would normally be your song, your recording. 
uh, your kind of uh, demo track of the song as you get going. Maybe it's just acoustic guitar as a, as a guitar player is playing along. This finishes scenario two, mapping your grid to your song. Now you're free to use quantization. If you're uh, a musician that does electronic music or always records to a tick track, then you're already there and you're ready to do scenario three, quantization.